All right. And we're live. So hopefully by the end of today, you will feel like, actually, this final isn't that stressful. Most of the stuff I still know. It's just I needed to be reminded of how to do it. So my advice to you is we're going to do it. Uh, you should do it just like we're going to do it here. We're not going to do every problem in this. We're just going to do one from every section. And by section, I mean idea. Like, see how this one looks a lot like that one? If you can do one of them, you can probably do them all. Why did I give you more? So extra practice if you're not sure. If you can do it, then don't do the rest of them. Don't stress yourself out, right? That's my advice. I have more copies of the review guide over there if you need them. Um, let's get going. I don't think we're going to have time to do all of these. So again, I'm going to go through each section and ask, do you want to do this uh, one like this? So number one, do you want to do something like that or no? Yes. Awesome. OK, so first off, we're given all of this stuff, so we don't need to write any givens. What we're going to do is say that, look, we know that this right here, minus 6 gets a CD. How do I know that? Segment addition postulate, right? I can put these two together and get this. So if I subtract that from this, I get that, right? It's reverse. It's algebra. Same thing here. So we're just going to use segment addition postulate. So here we go. Um, I'm going to say negative x plus 1. And I'll do that in purple. Minus 6 should equal cd. Yes, should I have written that this and that and that with their letter names? Sure, I should have, but like, who cares? Okay, so that should equal CD. How do I know that? By segment addition postulate. And you're like, but wait a minute, we're subtracting. I know, I know. Subtraction is just the opposite of addition. We could have written it differently, but we're not going to. By SAP. Cool, so now I know that. Well, what is this? Using basic math, here we are. Negative x minus 5 must be CD. Yeah, that's proof. Yep. Wow. Good thing there aren't that many. We did it without writing this part. But yeah, we're going to do it with that part. Yeah. Segment addition postulate. So now here we are. That's negative x minus 5. I also know that this bit right here, minus 6, gets me AB, right? So why don't I do that? Let's do it in red. Are there a million ways to do this? Yep. Is this most efficient? No. Is it the way I'm showing you? Yep. How do I know that? By segment addition postulate, which says the two smaller segments make up the bigger segment, right? These two small segments make up that big segment, right? I just wrote it like that. So now we've got x plus 10 equals ab. Awesome. Then once again, by segment addition postulate, I know that AB plus BC plus CD is going to get us this, right? So I'm going to write that. X plus 10 plus 6 plus a negative X minus 5. I'm just going to write minus X minus 5. There's a little distribution right there with a plus sign, right? Keeping it real. And that's going to equal 3X minus 4. And how do I know that? By segment addition <laughs> postulate. It says we can add up the little guys to make the big guy. The little guys make the big guy. That's it. That's, that's it. And then you do math and you find out what x is, which is going to be good, because if we know what x is, we can find out what ab is. Woo! So uh, 10 plus 6 minus 5. Well, that's 16 minus 5, which is 11. And then we have x minus x is 0. It goes away. Oh, wow, that's convenient. Now we're here. I'm going to add 4 to this side. Am I going to write, uh, make you write by addition property of equality? No, because I'm kind. Then I'm going to divide by 3. And I'm not going to make you write by, addition proper, or by division property. Therefore, x is 5. And now we need to plug it back in by substitution. So ab equals x plus 10, right? ab equals 5 plus 10. How did I do that? By substitution. SUBS, right? Not SUBT, that subtraction property. And then we get that AB is 15, <gasps> which is what they said it would be. Oh my god. Man. Flag box. OK. What do you think? As hard as you thought? No. 
It just takes a little bit of knowing what I'm asking, right? And now that you know, it's not too bad. So make sure you study this, not what I did, but know that, look, I'm gonna have to use segment addition postulate, and when I switch something out, I use substitution. Could you be super thorough and be like, AB plus BC plus CD equals AD, and then switch them out using substitution? Sure you could, but why? I don't wanna read that. Ain't nobody got time. How do you feel about that? For real? Okay. Sydney feels good, everyone. How about we skip the next couple, because they're the same thing, right? Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. Open your hymnals to page four. Question four. Page four, question four. She thick, right? All right. So derive the distance formula using the Pythagorean theorem. Derive means to pull out of. So no jokes. So we're going to take the Pythagorean theorem and we're going to pull the distance formula out of it. Be sure to thoroughly explain how and why you substitute for A and B in this diagram for full credit. So what do I mean by that? Well, here's the deal. This coordinate right here, I'm going to label x1, y1, which then means that this coordinate is going to be x2, y1. For those of you just tuning in for the first time ever to learn this, okay? No shame, no judge, okay? Check it out. If I have a coordinate plane, imagine a coordinate plane. Okay, here, I'll draw one. Boop, like this. This point and this point right here have a coordinate of whatever this x is and whatever this y is. Do we agree? That coordinate right there is this coordinate. Now, because it's the first x I put down, I'm going to call it x1 and y1. So its coordinate is x1 and y1. Are you watching or are you writing? You should be watching. You wrote it the first time when you learned it the first time, and that didn't work so well. So let's try something new. All right. So this coordinate right here, coordinate plane, right? Yeah. Bailey, yeah. with me. X1. Good, great. Don't look there. Look here. So notice it's some coordinate there and some coordinate there, which makes this, right? Good. We're going to call that x2 because it's the second x. Now notice it shares the same y. You with me? Great. Fantastic. Just want to make sure. Next up, that's y2 because it's a little bit higher, right? So what's the coordinate going to be here, Bailey? What's this guy's coordinate? Very good. I doing Yeah, probably not. I did. I did it up there. I definitely did. You just weren't smart enough to figure it out yet. You never are. Sorry. It's just how it is at the beginning of the year. I know it's not going to go well, but we got to do it. And then you'll get it now. But takes time. Takes time. Step? Is that yeah, to label these coordinates, yeah, you need to. Um, so, and again, you can label them whatever you want, but when you start with this one being x1 and y1, it kind of pulls the rest into it, right? So now we know that. So we know that b is going to equal this length right here, right? That's the length of b. Now, how long is B going to be? Well, if that was 10 and that was 2, how much distance is there? 8. How did you do that? <coughs> Subtraction. So x2 minus x1 is how long B is, right? 10 minus 2. So that's right. Subtraction is distance. So x2 minus x1 is B in this diagram. Boop. And then A is going to be what distance? Well, it's going to be whatever from here to here is. Which is going to be what? Y2 minus yes, which I'm deciding to write in black for some reason. Boop. And subtraction is distance, right? So what does this represent? What kind of distance? Horizontal, because it's the x values, right? Mm -hmm. And what does this represent, then? Vertical distance, very good. So what we're really talking about here is the, diff the distance between these two points. There's horizontal distance between them, and there's also vertical distance between them. And it's represented by these two legs of the triangle, right? Yes? All right. Pthag, what is Pthag? Very good. Yeah, I did. That's always been how you spelled it. Theorem?
Pythagorean. Pythag. Pythag. That's how my math gang used to say it. So check it out. We know substitution now because we learned how to do proofs. We know what B and A equal. They equal this stuff. So can't we take that stuff and substitute it down here? Yes. Sure you can! So let's do that. So instead of A, we're going to write what A is. And instead of B, we're going to write what B is. So of course it's addition, right? Because that's Pthag. And of course it's square. Don't forget the squares. Because it's Pthag. And we're going to write in x2 minus x1 for A. Oh, shoot, I screwed it up. Do y2. A is y's for this one. My bad. And B is the x's. Right. Um, not in this diagram, because it should be A first, then B. If you wrote Pthag with B first and A second, then that would work. Right? A is this, B is that. And we did that by substitution. By subs. And then the rest, it just happens naturally, right? We could do, like, root property of equality and all this other stuff, but we're not going to do it. Ta-da! Distance formula. I'm going to zoom out now. Sorry. So here's what we did. We said to find the distance between two points, you can break it down into a triangle of any size, right? So it works for any two points. The components of the distance between those two points is going to be a vertical part and a horizontal part. The vertical part is y2 minus y1, and the horizontal part is always going to be x2 minus x1. So if you know the coordinates here, you can plug them into this and find the distance between them. Again, based on pthag. How do you feel now? Better? Yes, you do. You guys don't remember, but I've told you. You've told me this before. That you have, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I told you what you could do about it. But I'm not going to say it again because you're just going to forget it. So, what's the point? Better? No, you're leaving? That's it? Oh. I left my stuff in. When Never. Really? Yep. Life goes on forever. Oh, you meant this. Um, I don't know. Three. What? Okay, you can do that right now if you want. I don't care. I don't know. You do you, man. What do you want me to do? Okay. Well. Number five. Okay, so here's the deal. A one-to-one -one ratio is saying they want you to take these two points, right? And they want you to cut them in half because half is one-to-one -one, or two-to-two -two, or three-to-three. -three. It's the same amount on both sides, right? That's what that means. So we're talking about the midpoint, aren't we? Right? Are you, are, did I do something wrong? Okay. So this is midpoint is what they're asking about, okay? What is midpoint? Average the x's, average the y's. When we average stuff, what do we do? Add or subtract? Add and then what? Yeah. Divide by the number of pieces. And in this case, it'll be one on each side, so it's going to be two total pieces, right? Okay. So the midpoint formula is going to be, your midpoint is going to equal a coordinate, right? Because midpoint is a dot. So it's a coordinate. And the x part of that coordinate is going to be the average of your x's. So the two x's put together. Average, because there's two of them, right? And the average of your y. Right, does that make sense? Sure. Two total pieces. Two x's, two y's, so we divide by two. Well, luckily, x1, x2, y1, y2. We just plug those in and we get our midpoint. So that's convenient. So the midpoint, whatever it is, is going to be your x's added together. Let's add our x's together. Five and one. I'm going to divide by two. And add our y's together. y2 goes first, so negative 7, positive 3. When we do this, 
we get 6 divided by 2, which is 3, and negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2. So guess what? That's our midpoint. Yay! Did I goof up my x's and plug in x1 first? Yeah, I did, but in this case, it doesn't matter. Sorry. Well, that sounds like a personal problem. All right, so midpoint is 3, negative 2. That's the midpoint. So that should be between our two points up here, which it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3. There's our A, and then our B should be down here somewhere. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Look, it is in the middle. Wow. Wow. Then it says find the distance of that line. Well, we can do it a couple ways. One, we can do distance formula and plug all that crap into the thing we just made, right? x2 minus x1 plus the quantity squared plus the quantity of y2 minus y1 quantity squared, all rooted, right? <coughs> or, you know, you can check your work using uh, PFAG as well. So notice, if we make this into a right triangle, 4 down here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 here. We can square both of those, add them, and root them, and we find the distance. What? Right? So this right here and that right there are the legs of a right triangle, which means we could find the hypotenuse, the length between A and B, by doing P tag. Right? So I can do 4 squared plus 10 squared. Add them and root them, and I get 16 plus 100 rooted which is 116 rooted, whatever that is. That's the distance. Is that required? What do you mean? Well, it doesn't say that you have to do it. Use the distance formula to find the distance between the points. Um, That's what it says. Okay. Now, the distance formula is the same thing as PFAG. If you had done distance formula, here's what you would have done. <laughs> if you had done distance formula, here's what you would have done, right? X2 minus X1. So that's 1 minus 5. And then it's y2, negative 7, minus 3, all squared. So what would you have gotten? 1 minus 5 is negative 4. And negative 7 minus 3 is negative 10. And look what would have happened. The same dumb crap you did up here. See how distance just finds you the distance horizontally and vertically? Which happens to be 4 and 10. Distance, you know direction doesn't matter, negative or positive. So all this does is find you the distance vertically and horizontally and then plug it in. Right? That's all that really is doing. Of course, that's where the formula comes from. The distance here and the distance there. And it's 4 and 10. So that's the distance? That's the distance, 4 and 10. And then we, we square, add them, and root them. We get the length of the hypotenuse. Right? This is our Horizontal distance, this is our vertical distance. And then together they make this like diagonal distance, right? The hypotenuse. So it's 116. Either way you do it. Yes? So are you confused on how you change the ratio? Like yeah. Right, so you're asking for a different problem, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh. Yep, so let's go on to number six. And that'll answer your question, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's number six. Same dumb crap, except, oh no, it's not going to be the midpoint this time, because they want us to find a point that's 3 eighths of the way between A and B. Now, first of all, when you start on a point and you walk to another, if you walk halfway, it's the same as if you had started there and walked halfway. You end up in the same spot, right? But if you go 3 eighths of the way, it's going to end up different. 3 eighths of the way is going to be here, walking from A to B. But if you walk from here, 3 eighths is going to be there, right? So it depends on which one you start at. They want us starting at A, so that's the one we want, okay? Just to keep that in mind. Because we're starting at A and location matters, you need to really pay attention to the, the formula here, okay? It's going to be y2 and x2 first. That matters, okay? So x1 and x2 are here. And y1 and y2 are here, right? The first the coordinate you start on should be the x1 and y1, right? Now in the formula, flips those. You'll see that in a second. So it's still midpoint formula that we're going to use, except instead of finding the midpoint, we're finding a point that's 3 eighths of the way. Now, remember, we're just going to average the x's and average the y's. So what we're going to do is we're going to have three x's on one side, right, because this is 3, and that's 8, right, 3 eighths. Are we cool with that? I'm sorry, not 3 eighths. 3 and 5, because the whole thing is 8 across. 
So the idea is that this whole thing's eight across. That means three over here and five over there for three eighths here and five eighths there. When we break it up, it's going to break it up not into half and half, but to three over here and five over there. Three eighths and five eighths. Are you smelling what I'm And if you're not, tell me. Okay. So when we do the formula, it's not going to be midpoint formula anymore. We're going to call it section formula because it's not finding the midpoint. It's finding a different section. And we're going to average our x's and average our y's still. So when we average, we still add and divide by the number of pieces. But this time, how many pieces total do we have? We don't have just one and one to make two. We have what? Eight, eight total pieces, right? So we're going to divide by eight because there's eight, eight total things, right? Now we're still going to average our x's, so x2 and x1, y2 and y1. And notice x2 and y2 come first in the formula. That's important. If they don't, then you're going to find this guy, not that guy. We want to find 3 eighths from A, not 3 eighths from B. Okay? So x2 and y2 have to come first. So those guys are going to go in first. Okay? I know it's kind of backwards, but that's just how it works. So. Not only are we going to do this, but we have to multiply the x's and y's by something. Because right now, we only have two x's, right? So we should divide by 2. But we want to divide by 8. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide by 3 x2's and 5 x1's. And 3 y2's and 5 y1's. Why do you think I use 3 and 5? That's our ratio, right? 3 to 5. 3 to 5 is the ratio. 3 eighths in ratio form is just 3 to 5. 3 pieces versus 5 pieces for 8 pieces total. So that's going to be our formula. 3 of that one, 5 of the other for a total of 8. So then we plug in our points and we find section for our section, right? Our coordinate. So dividing by 8, adding these guys up. So it's 3 times whatever x2 is, and 5 times whatever x1 is, 3 times whatever y1 is, and 5 times whatever that. Wrap it in parentheses when you plug it in. Um, we plug in 3, well, we plug in uh, x2. x2 is 1 here. Does everybody see that? x2 is 1. So I plug it in here. And then x1 is negative 7. y2 is negative 6, so I plug that in here. And then y1 is 2, so I plug that in there. Then we do math. We get 3 minus 35, which is negative 32 over 8. Then we have negative 18 plus 10, which is negative 8 over 8. I'll wait. We'll pause for station identification. So we're breaking up our line into 3 and 5, 3 eighths and 5 eighths. Total of 8 pieces, 3 for this guy, 5 for that guy. Remember, x2 and y2 come first. Okay, That's going to make sure we end up going from A to B and not B to A. So are we good up to here? Okay. Does everybody see where I got those numbers and why I plugged them in where I did? Yes. Mm -hmm. As opposed to regular midpoint? Well, regular midpoint is cutting it directly in half, right? So when we do regular midpoint, we have equal number of pieces on both sides, one and one, two and two, whatever, right? So one piece there and one piece there for two pieces total. We just don't write the ones because timesing by one is, doesn't change anything, right? Same thing here. One there, one there for two total. And that's going to cut it directly in half because it's equally balanced, one and one, right? Here, our ratio is different. We're not having, we're not going to cut it in equal balance. We're cutting it three versus five because three eighths leaves five eighths left over, right? We have three eighths here and five eighths there for a total of eight pieces. So we have three pieces here and five pieces there, right? For a total of eight, and that's going to make it unbalanced because it's not the same number for both of these guys, right? And it's going to make it lean more towards this way. So all you need to know is. 3 eighths is our ratio, so that's 3 versus 5, because 3, 5 left over, right? 3, 5, 3, 5 here, 
and then we're total pieces at the bottom, right? We're taking the number of pieces here and dividing by the total. Three there, five there, total is eight. We're averaging them. What? Then what's going to happen, instead of getting a 3 to 5 ratio, you're going to get a 5 to 3 ratio, and you're going to find this point. Does that make sense? It'll be pushed closer to B. Remember, we're starting on A, and we're walking 3 eighths of the way there. If you put 5 first, then we're walking 5 eighths of the way. We don't want that, right? Okay. So X2 comes first, Y2 comes first. And the reason we do that is because that's the way the formula works. If you flip it the other way around, it screws things up. And the reason for that is confusing. And I won't teach you that right now. Okay? Um, we'll do another one after this, just real quick, and I'll set it up. I won't solve the whole thing. But anyway, we get negative 32 divided by 8, which is negative 4, and negative 8 divided by 8, which is negative 1. So that means that's the point that's going to be 3 eighths of the way between A and B. So A is negative 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up 2. And B is 1, negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And negative 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 is our point that is 3 eighths of the way. It's 3 eighths of the way between A and B, starting at A, walking towards B. Yeah. That's the idea. So we'll set up the next couple few, but we won't solve them. Um, I'm not going to do distance for this because we know how to do distance, right? Draw your triangle. Go for it. Or use distance formula if you want. I won't be picky on the test. So let's set up the next one. When you guys are ready, let me know. Poor Rosie and Sydney. Hopefully they know how to do this stuff. The beginning is definitely the hardest, guys. You're doing your passive? All right, let's set up the next one. This one is one to one, which means midpoint, right? So use midpoint formula. Next one, number eight, is two sevenths. So, Michaela. Two-sevenths means we're using a ratio of two to what? Five. Yep. Mm -hmm. So our formula is going to be x2 plus x1 divided by the number of pieces. How many pieces total? Seven. Good. And we're going to have two of this guy and five of that guy. We're going to do the same thing for our y's. Feel good? That's it. Yeah, well, the idea is we have two-sevenths of something, right? We have two points, right, A and B. Two-sevenths of the way, well, that's two versus five, right? So the top number on the fraction always goes with five. Yeah, has to, right? I mean, it also goes with the Y, oh. right? You know what I mean? It just goes first, I guess. Then you set up and do it. Nine. Midpoint formula in reverse. Now, normally with midpoint formula, hello, we have two points, right? And then we find the middle, which is m. So we plug in the values here and here, right, to midpoint, and we get this guy. But they're saying, hey, I know this one, and I know the middle already, but I don't know that one. So how do we figure that out? Well, we're going to use midpoint and just plug in the stuff we know. So midpoint formula is the average of the x's, average of the y. Because it's midpoint, we divide by 2 because there's only two x's, right? One on each side. Same thing for y. So this time we know our midpoint. So it goes here. A lot of you guys want to plug that in here, and I'm not sure why. We know the midpoint. It's there, right? That's what this is supposed to be. Normally, we're plugging in stuff here and getting the midpoint. But for this one, we already know it. Making sense? Then we're supposed to plug in our endpoints here. Well, we only know one of our endpoints.
So I'll plug in the one I know. Well, you could put it in the second one. It wouldn't change anything. I just put it there and assume it's the first. It doesn't matter. We're doing midpoint, right? It doesn't matter which way we start from. So that's the setup. Now we know that this part equals this, right? Because normally we did our math here and we got this guy, right? So that equals that. So if you want, you can write that. x2 minus 3, that's the easier way of writing it, equals 1. Now how do we solve a problem like Maria? Multiply by 2. What do we get on this side? 2. Then we do what? Add 3, so we get x2 is 5. So I'm running out of room here, so I won't show my work, but x2 is 5. Times by 2, add 3. Now we know that y2 minus 2, that's the easier way of writing that, divided by 2 equals 5 halves. So we multiply by 2 to both sides. Well, on this side we get this, right? And on this side we have 5 divided by 2 times 2. It's just 5, right? When we divide something by 2 and times it by 2, it goes away. Right? That's what we did over here. And then we add 2 and we get 7. So the coordinate is 5, 7. Which makes sense. Because if you're on negative 3, how much do I need to add to get to 1? If I'm on negative 3, how much do I need to add to get to 1? 4. So halfway, I add 4. To find the next one, I should add 4 again, right? It's the same distance on both sides, so what should I get? 5. Oh my god. I'm on negative 2. How do I get to 5 halves? 5 halves is 2 and a half. So I added 4 and a half. If I add 4 and a half to 2 and a half, what do I get? Oh my god. 7. Right? It's the same distance on both sides. So if you add 4 to get to there, you should add 4 to get to here. Right? Do I need to see the work? Oh, you betcha. Nope. What? Oh, is that pizza for everyone? Wow. Nice people. Oh, man. I really hope this is only the people that show up all day. Look at now you got four. Thanks. Sick. Chatty Kathy. <laughs> oh, Taylor, welcome to being a teacher early. Yep, welcome to being a teacher. Yep, born to be a teacher, you can tell. It's fine, it's just money. It's just money. It's just money. How do you feel about that problem? Midpoint, plug it in, solve. Bailey? Okay. Moving on. Name the angle. <laughs> angle M A P. Angle Pam. I know I did it on purpose. Angle five and angle A. Yeah, that's probably the worst way to name it because, like, if I had another line going out of here, another ray, then which one's angle A? Could be any of them. Nope, angle A, angle symbol. You can name the whole thing based on its vertex. It's not a very good way of naming it because, again, if I were to draw another ray on here, right, which one of these is angle A? Well, it could be that one. It could be that one. It could be the big one, right? So it's better to use all three or use a number. But you can if you want. Mm -hmm. Explain the definition of each angle classification. Acute, right, obtuse, straight, reflex, revolution, complementary, supplementary. Want me to go over it? Mm -hmm. ah, definitions, are you kidding me? All right, so for instance, if the measure of angle A is... So angle, let's do measure of angle A, is between 0 and 90. Notice it's non-inclusive here. 
right? It doesn't have a line underneath it. This is an angle symbol, by the way. Those are less than symbols. We good? That's how I would do it. Otherwise, you're going to have to write a lot more. This is the fastest way. Then angle A is acute. Now, why would I write it like that instead of something else? Because you could say um, between 0 and 90 degrees not inclusive is acute. You could write that word for word. Yeah, I just wrote it with symbols. Angle A is between, literally in between. See how it's between 90 and 0? It's right in the middle. It's between 0 and 90, not inclusive, because it doesn't have lines underneath it. Then we could do that as well for uh, 90 degrees, right? When it equals 90 degrees, then right angle, blah, 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 right? If it's between 90 and 180, then it's obtuse, right? If it's, if it's exactly 180, then it's what? Straight angle, right? Then if it's 180, between 180 and 360 non-inclusive, we call that reflex. If it's exactly 360, a revolution. Now complementary and supplementary have to do with two angles, right? Measure of angle A plus me if, let's do if, measure of angle A plus measure of angle B equals 90, then complementary, right? If measure of angle A plus another angle measure B equals 180, then it's what? Good job, class, supplementary. That's it. Yeah, that's easy. Okay. It can be if you know it, which is literally the story of this test. And it's not like typical math where it's like, well, if you don't know it, you don't know it, right? I mean, like, if you know what you're talking about, you have nothing to fear. And if you don't know what you're talking about, let me help you so you can. There is a way to learn it, and there is a way to study it. There is. This one. Given that CAF is 95 degrees, prove that measure of angle BAF is 165. So this is just going to be angle addition postulate. That's all it's going to be. So we're given this, right? Let's write that down. OK. That means this guy. Wait, CAF? Whoops, that's not that guy, is it? Hold on a second. 75. That'll be fine. That'll be fine. It'll work. I didn't change my original diagram. That's CAF. That's 95, right? That's what they said. OK. So we know that measure of angle CAD plus the measure of angle DAE plus the measure of angle EAF equals 95 degrees. Oh, let's not write that. Equals the measure of angle CAF. And that is by. by that is by angle addition postulate. Correct? All the little angles after the big one? Then I'm going to write what they're worth. 35 degrees, 2x, and 40 equals 95 degrees by subs. Then I'm going to do math. So we want to prove BAF, right? Yeah. OK. Well, measure of angle BAF, BAF is going to be um, measure of angle BAC plus measure of angle CAD plus the measure of angle DAE plus the measure of angle EAF. And we know that by angle addition postulate. Right? All the little angles add up to the big one. Then we do substitution, which says measure of angle BAF is going to equal BAC. We found out to be 4x, or it is 4x. CAD is 35. DAE is 2x. EAF is 40. 
That's by subs. And then I'm going to do this. I'm using lots of parentheses. You don't have to. That's by subs because I substituted for x. Then I'm going to do math. Therefore, measure of angle BAF equals 70 plus 20 is 90 plus 40 is 130. And that's exactly what it was supposed to be according to them. Good job. 135. 135, right? The reason it was different than what they said is because I labeled my diagram incorrectly. My bad. But it's the same dumb crap. Sorry, I was trying to make lots of problems for you guys to do at 3 a.m. I'm so sorry, Shelby. I'm so sorry. It's not okay, but I'm glad you understand. I know normally I'm like 90% perfect in class, but I am very tired. Very tired. Except if you're first hour. First hour, I make all my mistakes. What? Can I have any breaks, sir? First hour, so it's even the first day? It's odds the first day. Yeah. How did you feel about that one? Not too bad, right? Whenever you're adding all the angles up to a bigger angle, angle addition postulate. Whenever you're switching stuff out, substitution. What I would do is I would just solve it the way you're going to do it, write out all your work, and then write in what you did, right? Is that the only way to do it? No. Is that the most efficient way? Probably not. It's just how I did it when I saw it, right? Okay? All right. Next one. Oh, it's a star. Just like all of you. Misshapen and outcast. <laughs> Write the name of the polygon, George. And tell whether the polygon is convex or concave. How do we know if something is convex or concave? Well, I, going. <laughs> right? I love asking this question because they always do the dance. Yeah, kind of. A more formal definition is if internally there's a, an, at least one angle that's greater than 180, meaning if there's at least one angle that's a reflex angle, then it's concave. Concave, that's greater than 180, right? Internal angle greater than 180. There's another one. There's another one. There's another one. And another one. All of the internal angles are, con are uh, greater than 180, which means it is most definitely concave. So. Concave. How many sides does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten sides. So that makes it a what? A decagon, of course, because December is the tenth month of the year. I don't know how. Um, that's not true. Wait, 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 wait. Because the other ones are convex. Yeah. What? Because the other ones are convex. Got it. So if you look at the internal angles, right, and there's a lot. There's one there, there's one there, there's one there, right? If you look at the internal angles and there's at least one of them that's greater than 180, then it counts, okay? Great question. All right, then it says mark congruent segments. Use the distance formula to find the lengths of the sides of the polygon and write the perimeter. We're going to use PFAG because ain't nobody got time for distance formula. So check it out. This segment, JK, to find its length, looks like it's 4 here and 3. 3 there. Well, that's a 4, 3 for our sides of our, uh, our right triangle. What's this going to be? 5, right? 3, 4, 5 is a special right triangle, so you can just save yourself the time. That's going to be 5 in length, so that's good. Are there any others that are also 5 in length? We'll find out. This appears to be 3 and 4 here, which means this is also 5 in length by Pythag, right? So look, they're congruent. I'm going to mark them. Hey, look, here's another 3, 4. So that's 5 in length. I see no other 3, 4s. So let's do the rest. This one is 2, 4, right? 
So that's 2 squared plus 4 squared, all rooted. What's 2 squared? Four. What's 4 squared? If we root that, we get root 20. Yep, so that's root 20. What about this one right next to it? It looks like 4 and 2. Oh my god, they're the same on both sides. That's another root 20. Wow. So I'm going to do two little tick marks there. Boop, boop. How about this one, B to C? You could literally just count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Technically, this is 8 and 0. 8 squared is 64. 0 is 0. You add them together, you get 64, and then you root them, you get 8. You see what I'm saying here? It's 8. Hooray. This one appears to be 2 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 2 squared and 4 squared added together. So we have 4 and 49. That's going to be 53. When we root it, it's root 53. Ain't nobody got time for that. This one appears to be 2 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh my god, it's another root 53. So I'm going to put three tick marks there. Boop, boop, boop. Could you use different colors? If you're Taylor, you would. Because this one's different than this one. These two are the same, and these two are the same. So one tick mark for these guys, because they're the first one I did, and three for that. All right? The three tick marks go together, the two tick marks go together, the one tick marks. Mm, it says mark congruent section, so yeah. Find a way to mark them. Technically, the way I'm doing it right now by putting the numbers down does do that, right? Because you can see which ones are congruent because they have the same numbers. Let's see if this one's the same. Well, it's two there and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh my god! It's another one. One, two, three. And another one. We have one left over that we gotta do. It's five by three, it looks like. So it's the only one that isn't the same as the rest. It's misshapen. It's like Nemo. 5 and 3, 25 and 9 added together. That's 34. Root 34 is root 34. It has nothing to be similar with, kind of like the 8. So now we add them all up. Well, we've got 5 plus root 34 plus 5 plus root 20 plus root 20 plus 8 plus root 53 plus 15. Plus 5, that's a 5. Plus root 53. Plus root 53. Plus. That's it. Okay. So all those. Now we combine like terms. 5, 5, and 8 makes 18. Plus 5 again is 23. 23. How many root 20s do I have? Two of them. So 2 root 20. 2 times root 20. How many root 53s do I have? 3. So plus 3 root 53s. How many root 34s do I have? He's all alone. And that's it. Could we put that all together with the calculator? Sure, but why would I make you do that? Guaranteed you'll probably make a mistake, and you have to round, which means your answer is less accurate than mine. Yes. With what? Good no. I can help you when we get to it on here, though. I got to do this for them right now. I'm sorry. Number 16. It's the same dumb crap. Concave or convex? Concave. That's what you want to say. Prove it. This angle is greater than 180. So, yep. Convex. That angle is greater than 180. Convex. Convex. Wait. These are all convex. Well, this one is. That one is. Yep, and that one is too. Oops. Oh, convex is what I meant. Yes. Sorry. Words are hard. 
Concave, 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 concave. You guys are all, always question me, always question me. Guys, I have had zero sleep. I'm out of caffeine because I have no money to buy myself soda. It's going to be rough. I did sleep. I went to bed at Friday. I went to bed at 8 o'clock when I got home after helping kids. And then I woke up at 11. And then I came here. Because I was so tired from the week. Remember, I'd had like three hours of sleep over like two days. Right, but why are you like, about 11 a.m.? 11 a.m., yeah. No, 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 11 a.m. then got back here. And then I had a decent amount of sleep last night, but again, catching up is hard. So, but it's okay. I do this for you guys. Um, that's right. If anybody should be stressed about finals, it should be me. You guys are going to be fine. And your portfolios. I could have just graded the finals, but I decided to give myself another thing to grade. Yes. This right here. Okay, starting with the given. We're given that. Great. Awesome. Then we're going to say, look, um, buy addition property. I'm going to do this. So No. How did I get from there to there? Addition property of equality, right? Don't lose your X's. Stalk them on Instagram. Then I did this, and I got negative 7. How did I get there? By division property of equality. Swag books. How am I going to solve this one? I'm going to do addition property of equality, and then I'm going to do multiplication property of equality, right? Done. Could I do multiplication property first? Sure you can. Everything gets multiplied, right? Yeah, it works, right? Just not as fun. No. Um, a, B, and C are collinear. What does it mean to be collinear? On the same line. That's my class. All right, so A, B, and C are on the same line. In that order. Some of you guys are just like, I just want to put C in the middle. That ain't going to work so well. I don't know. Some people decided to just to be fun, which I'm all about creativity, but, like, you're just making your life harder there, bud. Right? So that's what's given to us. Boop. How are we going to solve a problem like Maria? Angle, or sorry, segment addition postulate says that negative x plus, well, let's do this. Let's, do, let's be official. Segment AB plus segment BC equals segment AC by segment addition postulate. Then we can do substitution and plug those values in, and then we can do addition property of equality and all that jazz and solve, right? Yep. How do you feel? There's more there. How about we move on? Sounds good. Awesome. Next, given D is in the interior of angle ABC and all this stuff. So, spoilers, it's going to be angle addition postulate to put them all together, and then we're going to do things to, to solve for X. Right? Do you want me to go over it, or should we come back to it later if we have time? Sydney? How are you doing? Should I go over this one? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Yeah. I felt this diagram. Then I say by angle addition postulate, ABD plus DBC is going to give me ABC, right? And then I do substitution to plug in all their values. And then I do like addition property and subtraction property and division property, multiplication property to solve for x. Then once I get x, I plug it back in and find ABD by substitution. That's the thing everybody forgets. Is it wrong? Did I copy this problem down wrong? Here's angle X, Y, Z. Q is in the interior. Yep, X, Y, Z. Y is the vertex, right? What did you say it again? Have, to have something, to cut it in half. No, to half something, that's not a verb. To have something. I know. English is weird. To cut it in half, that makes sense. H-A-L-F, right? But to have something. 
Yeah. As opposed to H-A-V-E. Yeah. English is weird. Moving on. Oh, boy. This is the one that everybody got screwed up on. Remember this one? Yep, we're doing it. So they tell you that JK and LM are the same thing. Well, that's good. That's good to know. So given JK congruent to LM. No, we don't need the bar. It's fine. The bar implies the segment. No bar implies the length. We're talking about lengths. We'll, we'll talk about lengths. It's fine. Actually, well, yeah, yeah. OK, fine. So we'll do it. We'll do it. Technically, lengths are, are segments are congruent. Lengths are equal, right? Because lengths are numbers. Yeah, okay. Prove JL and KM are the same. Well, what is JL? Well, JL is this thing, right? That's JL. And KM is this thing, right? So we're trying to prove those are the same. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to say JL equals JK plus what? KL. KL, very good. Because that's what it is. Some of you guys were saying like it's JK plus LM and all kinds of stuff. Because you had no idea what you were talking about. You're just making stuff up, right? <laughs> but if you know what you're talking about, it makes sense. What is JL? It's this guy and that guy put to, uh, what? I ask you, what is wrong with these people, right? But they get it now, right? right. Okay. We also know KM is what? KL plus LM is equal to KM. Good job, Taylor. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Matt. Hey, what up? Your thing was yesterday. Oh, OK. Fair enough. So. Here's where the, oh yeah, how do we know this? This is by what? Segment addition postulate. The two little guys make up the big guy, right? And then we're gonna do substitution, because guess what? JK and LM are the same thing. Then we do this Yep. So I'm gonna write JL equals LM plus KL by subs, right? Yes? How do you know that they're equal? K. Not yet, right? Yeah. We don't know that yet. I love how you understood that. That was great. <laughs> All right, so we know that by subs, right? Because we switched out JK for LM, which we're allowed to do because we know the same thing, right? And then, now because this equals the same thing, we can set them equal to each other. Now, I'm going to put in another step here because, like, technically you can't say that KL plus LM is the same thing as LM plus KL. But we know by what property that it doesn't matter which direction they're in for addition. Oh, transitive. Don't be lying. Commutative or associative? Commutative. Yep. So these two, it doesn't matter what order they're in, but we can't say that for sure. So what we have to do is use the, uh, the reflex. No, stop it. Reflexive property to flip these two. So we're going to say JL equals symmetric property. That's what it was, symmetric. by symmetric property. And now, because JL equals KL plus LM, and KM equals KL plus LM, it must mean they equal each other by substitution, right? So I can take KL plus LM and substitute JL for it. So here, see how there's KL plus LM there? I'm going to plug in JL for that. Better? Yeah? It's cool, huh? It's kind of like a reverse substitution, one thing for two. We're used to doing two things for one, right? I think it's pretty dope. And now you get it so much better because time is all that matters. Yee yee, brother. Shout out to Kenny from Indian Creek. That's all he ever did in my class. Yee yee. Oh. Oh. I 
I feel like if I ever, in the future, note to self, if I ever go into a place that's like a Midwest convention, you know, like something like that, I'm going to go into this place full of Midwesterners, I'm going to push one. And they'll say, I'll say hope, they'll say hope, they'll push into another, and it'll be like a domino effect. Oh, 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 and it'll just spread out through the entire room. I want to record that. <laughs> oh, 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 Didn't see you there, right? Squeeze by, right? How do you feel about that one? Doable. If you know what you're doing. Memorization? Oh, good God. No, no way, right? Right? You see what I'm saying here? That's right. I love you all. All right, so this one. If I, I would never say that out loud, though. Okay. I'm losing my edge. Still got another semester to go here. Angry teacher. All right, you want to do number 26 or no? Yes. Yeah, okay. So x, y, they said was the same as y, z. Boop. And they said x, v, boop, is the same thing as v, u. With these two. Sorry, my bad. Two marks. Then they said XY, which I've already given a color to, is the same as VU, which I've already given a color to. So it turns out these guys are the same as well. So obviously they're all going to be the same length, right? How do we prove that? Prove that YZ is the same as XV which we did in red. Here we go. Given x, y is congruent to y, z. And x, v is congruent to v, u. And x, y is congruent to VU. Do you see it, Lottie? Yes, I do. Okay. We want to get blue and red together, right? According to this? Yeah. So how do we get blue and red in the same room? Mm -hmm. So here's what I'm seeing. Can I switch out purple for green here? and then switch out blue for purple? OK, let's do that. So I'm going to say xv is congruent to purple xy by subs. Do you see it? Yep. Do you, for real? OK, I like your hair today. It's nice. All right, and we know that XV is congruent to YZ by subs because purple is the same thing as blue, right? They're interchangeable. And now we have to reverse it. I think symmetric is on the same side reflexive as when you flip it across the equal sign. No, it's not. Tr is that like a bad word? Is that what we say when we're mad now? Transitive. Oh, transitive. By reflexive property. I actually don't have those two memorized, which is bad. I'm pretty sure it's reflexive. Isn't it reflexive? I don't know. I don't memorize stuff. I don't think it is. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I have no idea. Swipe through? Oh, no. Swipe through? Yeah. Swipe through? Yeah. Swipe through? I'm pretty sure reflexive is that way. Zayden, look up reflexive property for me. Isn't it where it's across the equal sign and symmetric is when they're on the same side and you're just changing the order? We still have like a whole thing. Yeah, we do. The beginning's the hardest, though.
I was right? Is that what you're telling me? That's reflexive? Then we want symmetric, don't we? Symmetric. Ugh, I'm so mad. Transitive properties, I'm touching the table, the table's touching the pen, therefore I'm touching the pen. That's like super substitution when it's like you need to jump through like 20 different things and you're just... Twenty wait, twenty five or twenty six? Twenty-five. When would you have used it? I don't think so. I think you need to set up a lot of stuff. You could have used it for twenty six. You could have literally just said Y Z equals X V by the transitive property. <laughs> yeah. But yes? Yes. Okay. Okay. Do 27 or no? Okay. Yes. Oh my God, guys. Okay, 28 it is. We're How much time do you think? No, we're doing just on Monday. Tuesday, you're going to talk about your portfolios with me. That's it. Oh, okay. You're going to review on your own. So we don't have to, like, prove a bunch of class. No. Does anyone listen to me ever? No. Why would I do that? No. Would anyone like to see 28? No, I'm good. Heck, never. Would you? Kind of. Okay, let's do it. Wait, you want to see it? Yes. Skip it. Okay. <laughs> Very mean might cry. <laughs> Perfect. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Sorry, they didn't give us that. And angle two. Angle three and angle four, let's do blue and orange. Stop whining. <sighs> Peters, what's wrong? Good idea. You're like boring, I don't need any of this stuff. Great idea. And we were, uh, we gave, we we're given that two and three are congruent, right? So two I did in red. Angle three. You guys are complaining. I have to do this review guide three times in a row today. No, because then I'd have 90 kids all in one room. That would have been exciting. Welcome to my lecture. All right. We're proving that one is four. So one I did in purple and four I did in orange. So yeah, next semester. Also, we're gonna have a lock-in with the pool. We're gonna like have a pool party. It's gonna be great. Yeah, and I'll cook out veggie burgers. It'll be great. No, trust me, it'll be the best burger you've ever had. No, it'll change your mind. It will, because I don't like burgers either. Yeah, that's because you probably don't know how to cook it. Burger King sucks at cooking things. Don't eat that. Don't eat that. I will cook you a burger that'll change your mind. It'll blow your freaking mind. I'm very picky with stuff, guys. Yeah. Pool party. Everybody in the pool. All my math classes. Right? Making memories. Hey, why not? I don't know. I can't stop you. Uh, no, but I'm like 95% of the time. Just de facto. -ly. It's very easy not to eat cheese, guys. It's very easy. Yeah, I have no problem with eating cheese, which is why I'm not a vegan. I just happen to not eat cheese a lot of the time, right? I mean, how many meals can I eat with cheese? Come on. All right. I know you guys. You guys make meals around meat, so it doesn't surprise me, right? What am I eating today? Well, I'm having a pork chop. I'm having a burger. I'm having steak. I'm having chicken nuggets, right? That's the meal, right? You have, like, five things you eat.
five animals. That's it. I eat like everything else. <laughs> right? Every vegetable and fruit known to man. All right, here we go. Next. No, shut up. All right. So measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals what? By definition. Definition is supplementary, right? And we know angle three and angle four. Jerrica, are you crying yet? I am. She is. It says might cry. I can't see her. What? <laughs> All right. Then can't we do substitution? Right? By final time, I have like zero patience for this. I'm just like, and then you do the thing and we're done. Move on, right? And you guys are like, no, 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 no. I don't know what the thing is. I'm just like, come on, guys. We've done this a hundred times. You got this. And you're like, no, 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 no. How long is our class? Mm-hmm. Like 10 minutes. It's fine. Flash, like, At least 5 million. Okay, like At least. Like, there will be a part A and a part C. What? Oh, okay. No. Wait, we only have one day. Okay. What about part B? Yeah, I am. I'm never going to Yep, that's right. You're going to be here forever. This is all a giant ploy to make sure you guys never, ever leave me. That's right. SUBT for that last one. You could just take a picture. We could do this a lot faster if you just let me talk through it and then you take a picture when I'm done and you say, do I understand what he's saying? Yes, I do. Great. Moving on. Right? How about we do that? So we take angle one and angle two. They're 180 by definition because they're supplementary, right? Angle three and angle four sum to 180 because they're supplementary, right? So they add up to 180 by definition. Um, if they both equal 180, then they equal each other by substitution. Then we subtract angle two from, each, from both sides and we get angle one equals angle four. And therefore, that means angle one is congruent to angle four. So these two add up to 180, and that up to 180. So they must equal each other by substitution, right? Mm-hmm. We took this and plugged it in for 180. Yeah. So what you have on the left in the first two lines on the right, do you have to have both of those even though they're the same thing? You could do this and write it once. Um, no, so like, do you have to write this two, this right here? No, no. It's like on the, your given, do you have to write that and that? That and this? Yes, because supplementary doesn't mean it adds up to 180 unless you know the definition, right? So you're given it supplementary, and then you know that means it adds up to 180 by definition. Okay. I'm being pedantic, I know. Maybe. Next one. No one cares, Rosie. God. All right. You want to see 29 or no? No. What about 30? All right, let me say it out loud. Transversal is a line that cuts two other lines. Do the two other lines have to be parallel? No, it's just a line cutting two others. Corresponding angles are two angles that are in the same relative location. Do they have to be parallel? No, same relative location. If they're parallel, what will be true about corresponding angles? They'll be congruent. Yep, exactly. Same side interior. It's the ones that are on the same side and the interior, like three and eight. Alternate inter- exterior means they're on the outside and they alternate, meaning one and seven. You might think, oh, wait, one and four are on opposite sides and they're on the exterior, but they're better described by linear pair. Um, oh, yeah, and there's more that you could do. I just stole this from the test, and so there's only a couple on there. So there's also, you need to know, same side exterior, right? And you need alternate interior, right? Okay. Moving on. 
All right, first thing you're going to write for this one is given that L and M are parallel, because without that, we can't do any of the magic. 2 is congruent to 7. Why? Because 2 is congruent to 3 by vertical angles, and 3 is corresponding with 7. By substitution, 2 is 7. How do you feel? Yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. 33, 4 and 7 are supplementary. That's what we got to prove. So I'm going to say that 7 and... Uh, we want 4 and 7 supplementary. So 7 and 8 are supplementary by linear pair theorem. And 8 and 4 are corresponding. So they're congruent, right, by corresponding angles, cap. And then we use substitution to switch out 4 for 8. And so 7 is supplementary to 4. Want me to write it out? I'll do it. All right, so first, angle 7 and angle 8. Our sup, how do we know that? By linear pair theorem. No. I know that 8 is congruent to 4. Again, that's I'm setting equal to 4 because that's what we want, right? And I know that by cap, right? Oh, by the way, again, I told you given L and M are parallel, right? I didn't write that, but I said it, right? Given L and M are parallel, all this follows, okay? And then by substitution, I can say that angle 7 and angle 4, see I'm switching 4 for 8 here, are supplementary. And we know that by substitution because I switched them out. Swag box. So 7 and 8, linear pair. 8 and 4 are the same. Switch out 8 for 4. Let me get this. Uh, half. Yes. Bajillion. I haven't made it yet. I don't know. I'm going to make it tonight. Good idea. I was really thinking of making it impossible, and that way everyone fails my class. And you'll have to take it again. And then parents will be mad, and then the principal will be mad, and my department will be mad, and everybody's going to be mad at me. But that's what I want, so that's why I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it that way. That's right. That's right. I want to be known as a villain. <laughs> In my villain-like idea, I have a hook. And an eye patch. I'm a pirate. I'm basically a pirate. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Nerds can't be pirates? You want to see this one, page 23, or no? Peters is so mad. I'm not wearing a monocle. Monocles are for dorks. I'm going to try one, though. Okay. Like the Peanut Man? <laughs> its name is Mr. Peanut. Mr. Planters. Planters is someone else. It's the corporation. Mr. Peanut is the mascot. Wow. Wow. Sorry. Wow. It's a peanut. Jerrica, where are you? <laughs> All right. Want to do this one or no? That's right. No, no, no. P and Q parallel in this one? No. no. So guess what? 14 and 10 aren't going to be congruent. They're going to be different. Why is she with her aunt? Is she sickly? Is she sickly? In what? They're in the car together. Okay, shout out to Jerrica's aunt. Woo woo! Push the pedal to the metal. What? This one? Yeah, that's fine. So check it out. Prove that angle 6 is 160. Okay. So check it out. I know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 5, right? By what? So first, given P parallel to Q and M parallel to n. I know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 5 by cap. And I know that angle 5 and angle 6 are supplementary by linear pair, right? Now we know 6 and 14 are congruent 
buy cap, right? What's amazing is I've never had you guys do this before, like directly this, right, with all the proof and everything, but you guys know what you're doing, and so you can figure it out. A problem you've never really seen before, but you have the tools to solve. That's real knowledge. I'm very proud of all of you. Bye, Cap. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we can do substitution and set 2y plus 8 equal to 3y minus 20 because 5 and 6 we already said were supplementary, right? So let's do that. So let's do two steps at once. We're doing substitution and we're doing by definition, right? Because we said it was supplementary, right? So they add up to 180, right? Let's do it at once. So we get 2y plus 8. No. Plus 30y minus 20 equals 180 by definition and substitution. Then we do math and we find y. So that's going to be 32y, negative 22. We add 22 there, we get 202. 202 divided by 32, does that come out evenly? I hope it does. Um, 160, it, no, 212 does. Oh, no. Um, we add this. Oh, wait, hold on. We add this and we get 200. We subtract 8 and we get 192. 192 divided by 32? Uh-oh. That's 102. No, I'm sorry, 202. Oh, that's what I did wrong. Negative 20 plus 8 is negative 12. When we add 12, we get 192. That's, I did it right the second time. I did it wrong the first time. I did it wrong the third time. All right, then we divide by what, this. So 1 and 3 makes... Oh, this is divisible by 3. We're fine. Wait, it needs to be divisible by 32. That's a problem. Um, 130, 30 left over, 120, 150, 180. Yeah, that's not going to come out nicely. I should have known that. Hmm. Hmm. It's six. It comes out evenly? Yeah, it's six. I just put it in. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, because 30 times 6 is 180. 6 times 2 is 12. Very good. No. Yes. No. Guys, think about it. 6 times 30 is 180. 6 times 2 is 12. I would, if I wasn't exhausted and stressed. No money, negative $3 in my bank account. All right, so. No, that's like, that's my bank statement. That's not a mood. All right, so y is 6. And so now that y is 6 by substitution, we can say that this is whatever it is, and then sub. right, right, right. So... By substitution, we know measure, yep, measure of angle 14 equals 30. Enough, Shelby. By subs. And that means measure of angle 6 equals 160 by substitution. Woo! All right. So given these are parallel, we know that angle 1 and angle 5 are congruent by cap. 5 and 6 are LPT, so they're supplementary. 6 and 14 are the same thing by cap. We substitute them out. We get 2y plus 8 equals... Uh, 2y plus 8 plus 30y minus 20 equals 180. We put those together. We don't screw up the math. We find out that y is 6. Then after we find out y is 6, we use substitution plug it back in. And then since 14 is 160, 6 must be 160. Right? Yes. Do you need a charger with an no, iPhone? Okay, sorry. Oh, this one you can do lots of ways. And I don't know how to...
Why does it say write the rule when it gave me the rule? Because the rule is going to include moving that to the center and moving it back. So earlier when they said to rotate stuff, they said something like, hey, you're going to have to move C because C isn't in the right spot, right, or R, right? And then you're going to have to do this, and then you're going to have to move it back, right? Well, they're saying move C, then do this, then move it back. So I did that all wrong. Mm -hmm. The numbers are a lot nicer than that. You have to move C to the origin before you do that. How do we move to the origin? One to the right and one down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I have to do that to every other mm -hmm. point. Thanks. No. You're causing way more work than you have to do. do. That's not good. 56, question or no? No. 57. 58. Okay, check it out. Boop, 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 boop. These angles are the same because of vertical, right? These angles are the same here and here because of cap. Do you see it? And that means that's by vertical. Right? So this is 3x. Mm -hmm. So I would say, given that I label these lines, I call this like line L and this line M. Given that L and M are parallel, um, I don't have any of these angles labeled. That sucks. So label them. <laughs> I'll label them for you in the final. But label those angles. So you'll say this angle is congruent to that angle by cap. These are congruent by a vertical. Therefore, by substitution, 5x minus 20 equals 3 3x, right? We do have time for it. All right. So I would write, given L and M are parallel, these two angles, whatever their names are, are congruent by cap. Do you see it? Or you could just label it yourself. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm doing it this way, right? So these two are going to be congruent by cap, right? Do you see it? OK, good. Then that means these two are congruent by vertical. That means this equals that. Then I solve for x. Then I say by um, um, interior angles of a triangle, right, add up to 180, right? So that way, this plus this plus this equals 180. We know what this is now. Spoilers, it's 30. I think it's 30 degrees. Right? And so then we solve for y doing math. And we prove that x is 10 and y is 25. Yes. Are you sure? Yeah, I did my math wrong. Okay. Poor shame. Me? God bless you. God bless you. 58, yes or no? No. Uh, no. Wait, is that the one where you have to draw, like, you the line of something? Yeah. It's called the line of citizenship. Auxiliary no. line. No. You dig? Uh, I Isn't that beautiful? Shout out to Jerrica's aunt. <laughs> that one's for you. That's right. Oh boy. No, 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 no. No locker room talking here. Especially about you, especially about me. Can't deny she's got good taste. All right, moving on. 30. What is slope? Go over it or no? Rise of a run, change in y over change in x. You know this. And an explanation. Rise over run, change in y over change in x. That's the delta, right? y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, what does it mean? Distance, uh, vertical distance over horizontal distance, right? Change in y over change in L x, that's delta y, delta x. Delta, yes. Delta means change. I'll save time by not writing it. 
What could go wrong? <laughs> Ladies, don't take that attitude with me, young lady. All right. <laughs> Taylor, shut up, God. <laughs> shut up, Shelby, God. No one cares, okay? I did. It was great. I thought in my head, we're going to do this. I miss Shelby, and so I pretended that she was Shelby. And you were a great disappointment. <laughs> You'll never be as good as your sister. All right, so here we go. Trauma growing up. The Walmart version. Of the, Walmart version. <laughs> the great value. <laughs> All right. You want to find slope? No. Okay. Stop crying. If they're parallel, they have the same slope. If they're perpendicular, they have the flip in the gate. And if they're not, they're askew. Okay. Do you know how to find slope really quickly? Um, Look at this. The change in y, right? How much did we change going from our y's? Well, we went up one. How much did we change in our x direction? Well, it looks like we changed from 0 to negative 2. So we went down 2. So that's our slope. OK, we changed from negative 2 to negative 1 in our y direction. So that's the change in y, right? Delta y. So it's negative 2 going to negative 1. We went up 1. Went from, right? I mean, that's what the formula means when we're doing all that subtraction. But if you do the formula, you're probably going to miss a double negative and get screwed, right? So why not just think about what it means? It's change in y over change in x, right? We're going from negative 2 to negative 1. We went up 2, or went up 1. Yeah, and then from here, again, direction matters. So make sure you're consistent. I always start on the right and go to the left. So vertically, I went from negative 3 to negative 4. So what did I do? I went down 1. Horizontally, I went from negative 1 to 1. So I went up 2. Same slope. This would not be parallel. What? A skew just means anything that's not parallel or perpendicular. And then if something's perpendicular, it means that like flip and negate. So if this is negative one over two, and this was positive two, perpendicular. Well, two over one. Imagine this was two. Then it would be the negative reciprocal of this. So they'd be perpendicular. Flip and change the sign, right? Good. Now, what if we get something like 0 over 5? What does that mean? That was every single thing there was wrong, but that's OK. Sometimes, only sometimes. 7 going to 9, what happened? Good job, Shelby. Six to six. So zero on the bottom breaks math. We call this undefined. And because the reason it's undefined is because you're not allowed to divide by zero. What does this mean? We're going up two over zero. So what kind of line are we talking about? Vertical. vertical, very good. So if this one is anything over zero as well, it's vertical, which means it's going to be parallel, right? So this one is going from one to 10. So we went nine up, great. And then we did five to five, which is zero. So this one went 2 up over 0. This one goes 9 up over 0. Great. They're increasing at different rates, but it doesn't matter, right? It's going to be the same rate overall, so they're both vertical, which means they are parallel. Now, what if this was 0 over 9? What if that was reversed? Horizontal. horizontal, which means it's going to be perpendicular. Next, write the slope-intercept form of the equation of the line, describe it, and graph it. What is slope-intercept form? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Why is it slope intercept form? Why is that one called slope intercept form? Because that's what I don't know because we memorized and we didn't learn. We speak no evil. I really am. I really am. I'm really sorry. Slope intercept form. Guys, you ready for this? It's the one with the slope 
and the intercept in it. The slope and the intercept. Which intercept? The y intercept. That's why it's called that. Well, it, everything has an x and a y in an equation because they're variables. It's not that bad. It's a good book. It's a small one. Slope intercept form is what this is. So it's a y equals mx plus b because it has the slope and the y intercept. So we're going to take this point and we want it parallel to that. What do parallel lines have in common? Freaking slope. That's right. So we know we're going to use the same slope. And they never intersect. Very good. That's what they have in common. They never intersect. I don't intersect with you, and you don't intersect with me, and that's why we're the same. All right, okay. So we want a line that goes through this point and has that slope. So we need an equation that's going to be parallel. So here's our, or our parallel line. It's going to be y equals 3 quarters x plus b. It's got to have the same slope, right? Now the question is, how do we make it go through that point? Well, remember, when a line goes through a point, it means that it is a solution to the equation. So when we plug in negative 4, we should get 6. So what does b have to be to make that true? Why do you get b? Because it does algebra. Why are we doing it to plug it in? Think about this. What is a line? It is a collection of points that solve the equation. Okay? Any point on that line will solve your equation. It'll be a true statement. So if we wanted to go through that point, when we plug in negative 4, we should get 6, right? If it goes through that point. Now, what does b have to be to make that happen, right? Because if I plug in negative 4, normally I get negative 3. That doesn't give us 6. I'm going to have to have that be 9, right? I suppose. Do you see what I'm saying? Kind of. That's why it works. If you want it to go through that point, when you plug in negative 4, you should get 6, right? If it's going to go through that point. So we adjust b to make sure it does do that. Another way to think about it, Taylor, is that's the y-intercept. So if we intercept here, there's our slope, right? It's going to hit those points. But if I intercept down here, same slope, it's going to hit different points. So what do I need to set this at so that it does go through negative 4, 6? That's what I'm talking about. That's why we do what we do. All right, cool. So that's going to be 6. That's going to be negative 4. Now we do math. Negative 4 divided by 4 is? Times 3? Yay, multiplying fractions is not scary. And look, b is 9. It is scary. So if, if, if our line goes through 9 with that slope, it will hit this point. So here's 9, up 3 over 4, and then down 3 over 4 also works. Why does down 3 over 4 also work? Because 3 quarters is the same thing as negative 3 over negative 4, right? Because two negatives cancel. Yeah. So we can go up to the right 3 and up 4, or we can go to the left 3 and, uh, sorry, down 3 and the left 4, right? Gets us the same idea. So there's our line, and it will be parallel to this one, which is the same slope, but at negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Same slope, trust me. Why? I just, because that was the original. I just did it real quick. Yes. X equals 5. Well, we want it parallel to x equals 5. What kind of line is x equals 5? Horizontal. Great guess. You'd think so, right? It's not. It's not. Don't think, oh, it's the opposite. Don't do that. Yeah, why is it vertical? Because x is 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we want every point where x is 5, right? That's what an equation is. It's a set of a collection of points that make the statement true. All the points where x equals 5. Well, 5, 0, 5, 1, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 4. Exactly, right? Yeah, good job, Taylor. That's a good yeah, it is. So that's the original line. We want a line that's parallel to that and goes through this point. Well, where's that point? Negative 7, 6 is over here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, won't it be this line? Right? That's much worse. But what's the equation of that line? x equals negative 7. It's all the points where x is negative 7. Yes. Done. Can you solve it if you don't know what it means? No, you'd be screwed, right? There's no way. But if you know what it means, it's super easy. Cheyenne. Ooh, yeah, it is, isn't it? It never says that you have to graph the original line. But if it did, you'd still just, right? Good question. How do you feel? Can you explain on the 
Yes! Okay, so check it out. You know that x equals 5 is this line, right? Yes. And you know why that is. Yes. Excellent. So I needed to go through this point and be parallel. So it's going to have to be another vertical line, so I just draw it. Now, what is the equation of that line going to be? Well, this one's where x equals 5 because all the points are where 5 something, right? Well, this one's all negative 7 something. Negative 7, 0, negative 7, 1, negative 7, 2, negative 7, 3. So the equation is x is negative 7. So if you were doing the same problem except it was for y, would, you, would it be y equals 6? Can you get rid of it? If it had to go through that point and I had to do this, yeah. so a perpendicular line, yeah, it would be y equals 6 because, look, everything is 6 for, for those points. Now, you're just going to think, okay, I look here, right? Which is fine, but hopefully you know what it means, right? So that's all the words that we have to show. Yep. No. My son, what? Your son? Yes. I probably have many. Are you engaged? No. Was I or am I? Yes, he was. He told us that story. I was. I did. <laughs> to a fabulously wealthy and beautiful woman who was very nice. What if he married her and he wasn't working here now? I know, right? Yeah. Could have retired at age 35. Did you never Hawaii. Any of us? I know. Now, see, this one is a You guys want to do number 69? I love my students, each and every one of them. I love them all. They really get me. Shelby, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Okay. What? <laughs> if it's parallel, yeah. I love my job. 69! Nice. All right, here we go. So, perpendicular to this one. So, are they going to have the same slope? No. No. They're going to have flip and negate slope, which is slope of 3. Yes, yeah, Shelby, come on. <laughs> oh, stop whining, okay? I'm going to be here until 9. It would be cheaper if I did. Oh no, how are we going to graph that? I'll tell you how we graph it. You don't go down to negative 17. You think logically. I know this point has to be on the line, right? 5, negative 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 2, right? We know that point has to be on the line. And then, you do the slope. And then we just do the slope from there. 1, 2, 3, up 1. There it is. Yeah. I know, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Every year someone complains, Mr. Mac, it goes off the graph. I can't do it. And I go, oh, wow, that sucks, doesn't it? Well, if I went down to negative 17 and go up 3 over 1, I'd get there, right? Say that again. Can you say that again? So check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Negative 17 is a y-intercept. That goes off our chart. So instead, what I did is I took a point that I already knew was on our line, 5, negative 2, and then I just went up 3 over 1 from there, right? The point of slope is that you can take any point that you know is on your line and use the slope and find another. There's your line. You don't have to graph that. If you already know another point, just take the slope and do it. What? Um, 71, 72? What? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. They're just perpendicular. Yeah. X equals zero. Here's the line X equals zero. And negative three, negative one is the point we want it to go through. And we want it to be perpendicular. So it's going to be this line. It's where X is negative one, right? Right, nope, sorry, hold on. It's where y is negative 1. My bad. Y is negative 1. Because we have 0, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 2, negative 1, 3, negative 1, 4, negative 1, 5, negative 1, 6, negative 1. Right? I could be an auctioneer. I could do it. How hard could it be? Do it. All right. Remember, can't help your grade, but it also can't hurt it. Right? Uh, tell which vectors are parallel. <gasps> Guys, we're here. We're home. Recent quiz. That's right. This is what we did 5 a.m. today. I love how you just sit in the 
How do we do this? We want to do this one? No. Okay, fair enough. I'll do it. So remember, remember, parallel means they have the same slope. So vectors have direction and magnitude, right? So we all, all we really care about for parallel is what direction they're heading in. In other words, what their slope is, right? So if you look at V, it has a slope of negative 2 over 1, right? Because it's going 1 to the right and 2 down. So 2 down and 1 to the right. That's the slope, right? Technically. Negative 2. That's the slope. Whereas u is 1 down and 2 to the right. Different slope, right? Not parallel. u and v are not parallel. They aren't. They're just askew. Slope of 0, so a must be horizontal. And it is. 8 to the right and 0 up, right? b. <gasps> they're horizontal, so they're parallel. No. On the one hand, I give you a million of these, and they're super easy, and you'd love that because it lots of points. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I'm sorry. Look, they're parallel. C is congruent to V. I love you guys. You guys are great. You got the can do attitude. You're not like, I hate Mr. Mac. Or maybe at least you are, aren't in, per, aren't in person. No, we don't hate you. That's good. Makes my job a lot more fun. All right, these guys, not parallel. Close, but not quite. Then we find magnitude, which is talking about how long they are, which is distance formula, which is just Pfag, right? Our, um, um, C and D are perpendicular. Yeah, they're not And V and D. Doesn't say so. I want to throw something at you. Nope, 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 not glass. That's why I keep this up here. This right here is for Danny Mao. One of these days, Danny, just chow, right? Switchblade. Get off my truck, dipstick. Stay away from my truck, dipstick. You ever seen that one? No. <laughs> yes? Yeah! Yes! Yes! <laughs> all right. You're the only one that understands me today. Where have you been all semester? All right. It's a pickle jar. It's the best kind. Today's stream brought to you by Clausen. Kosher dill thin slices. When I eat pickles, I always eat Clausen for the crunch. Uh, you ready, guys, to uh, do a uh, PFAG, right? One squared, negative two squared. So we have one plus four, which is five. So guess what? V's magnitude, which you guys always freak out when I do the symbol for magnitude, equals root five. It is, kind of, because think about it. Absolute value is measuring distance. I don't really remember what absolute value is, but I remember it learning it in seventh grade, but I don't remember. Guys, absolute value isn't even a real thing. It's just squaring something and then rooting it afterwards. Absolute value is shorthand for that. Because when you square something, it makes it positive, guaranteed, and when you root it, it sends it back to the original. So squaring it and rooting it just gives you the same number, but makes it positive. Which is the same thing as absolute value, right? So absolute value is a shorthand for that. Absolute value is distance. I don't remember That's okay. So do we see how to use PTEG for all these? Wonderful. Ex uh, excellent. Moving on. Next one, translate. Should we do it or no? No. Yep. Reflection over a complex line. Ready? Want to do one of those or no? You ready? Here we go. Uh, you want 78, 79, 80, 81, or 82? 82. Fight, fight, fight. Let's do 81. Don't remind me. I'll change my mind. Shut up, Shelby. All right. Where's Jerrica? I will throw my phone at you. 
might cry. Okay. I wonder if she is crying right now. Are you crying in the back of your aunt's van? Is that what's happening right now? That'll be her like first like emo rap album, Aunt's Van. Crying in the back of my aunt's van by Aunt's Van. That that'll be her rapper name, Aunt's Van. That's a good one. I'm writing that down. Aunt's Van. That's a good name. That's a good name for a band, Aunt's Van. Now you gotta tell YouTube, this yeah. is mine. Yeah, no. So what if someone copyrights it? Don't care. You can sell cookies. All right. And then you can get money. For my band names list. Okay, here we go. Yeah, Actually, no, I want to be those, like, you know those two things that you hit together? All right, my phone got destroyed a while ago, so I don't have a ton of band names, but here are the four I have in the last month or so. Some of which aren't very great, and some of which I wrote down just because people said, oh, you should put that one on your list. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then I should have pulled out, like, my calculator and been like, oh, yeah, I'm typing it in, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Right. Oh, anyway, you know vines. <laughs> Band name. Got her. All right, so I've got Kitchen Kettles, Infinite Bison, Liquid Pain with a KW instead of a U or a Q, and then Ant's Van. I think Ant's Van's definitely the best one. I used to have really good ones. <laughs> Infinite Bison. <laughs> Infinite Bison. That's all I do. Make kids cry all day. Can you imagine if I didn't have a filter? Make you laugh so much more. But I do. I do. All right, so here we go. We're going to graph that line. That's the mirror. Here's the mirror. It's negative 4 for a y-intercept, and it's down 2 over 3. 1, 2, 3. I'm just graphing the mirror right now, guys. Up to left 3 also works. Let me take out Saddam. You've only had one semester with me, guys. Imagine semester two. Great. I will admit, most of my best material for semester one is at the beginning of the semester, right? Yeah. But we're getting there. Mm -hmm. Yep. There's a guy that does, it's, he's a channel on YouTube called Stand Up Maths, and he does math jokes. He's got nothing on me. Nothing. Shut up, guys. All right, so then we're going to plug the, uh, then we're going to graph this point, negative 2, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Peters, are you going to be in first hour next semester? It's going to work out better. All right. <laughs> Nothing. All right, so we're going to reflect that point across this line. Ready? We need to find the perpendicular line of that. If we're going to find perpendicular, we need perpendicular slope. So we're going to have y equals 3 halves x plus b. That's how I draw you back in. Negative two six. I still don't see how it like it correlates. Is that what it was? You're just making up stuff. Yeah, you know then we do math. Negative two divided by two is negative one times three is negative three. So B is nine. So that's the perpendicular line. Up three over two. Whoops. Up. Nope, I did it right. Up three over two. Oop. Oh. High schoolers are dumb. All right, so that's the perpendicular line that this point, when we flip it, is going to end up on. It's going to be right there. When we flip it. Right? No! Are we ready yet? You're telling me after. Are we ready now? I just got some stairs Oh my god. All right, so this thing right here. Are we good with perpendicular? We're good? We found B? Okay, excellent. So now what we want to do is see where they equal each other, where the midpoint is. Spoilers, it's going to be right here. Oh, this is what I just said. In color. For my thing. Yep. Yep. Mm hmm. Yep. You wrote the definition of midpoint, Ryan. What is the midpoint? And then you answered it with something that is definitely not true. Oh, whoops, sorry, 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 sorry. we got to find where these two equations equal each other. So we're going to set this one equal to the other one. In my defense, I'm surrounded by morons. It's really cold in here. Yep, it is. No one cares. I'm so worried. We should have brought a blanket. Yeah, come on. Okay, I'll bring a blanket to class. Do it. My seventh hour does. Like every day? Yeah. Can I leave one? In fact, it might even be in here. I'm glad I'm a 
probably going to well, do. Yeah, uh, I don't want to mix the blankets because then smallpox potentially, right? Like we can repeat that instead. What about like the black where you eat that instead? Yeah, wait, what happened? Damn. What happened to Ill? Uh, manifest destiny, right? Have you never heard of this thing? No. Yes, that's when we felt that we needed to go. We needed to keep expanding because we just weren't good. At right, because all that land was out there. No one was living in it anyway. So, so why not expand? Not Except people were living in it. One of the biggest nations to ever exist in this world, up there with the Great Roman Empire and the Great British Empire, was the Iroquois Nation. And we're just like, look at all this open land that nobody lives in. And the Indians are like, hey, but like, we're, we, we, we're, we're living. And they're like, look at this. No one's here. It's free for the taking. And they're like, but we, we're, we're here. And they're like, no one's here. This is great. We should keep moving out this way. Right? And so what did they do? They encouraged poor white people to move out there because they gave them incentives with money to go out there and do that stuff. And then they felt like their land was being encroached upon by the people who lived there already. And then there's so it was very like interesting war tactics. Again, it was like war without actually being war. And then one of the tactics that we used was to give smallpox blankets as gifts to these people and destroyed them by disease, chemical warfare. And then people get mad when people say, hey, man, like, I would like some equal rights here. And like, oh, you don't even live here. Well, we did. <laughs> yeah. Like, stole California from the Mexican lands and they fought in the bloody civil war. All right, we need common denominators. <coughs> so two times what gets a six? Three, very good, so that's nine, six. What's three times uh, two? It's six, so we times the top by two. Why do we times the top and the bottom by the same number? Because if you do it to both sides, it's not child abuse. No. So, so if I multiply the bottom by three to get it to six, and I multiply the bottom by a two to get it to six, it changes the problem. But if I multiply the top and the bottom by three, then it's like dividing, it's like timesing by one. Because I multiplied by three over three to make that happen. And what is 3 over 3? Yeah, 3 over 3 is just 1, right? And here I multiply by 2 over 2. Right? Doesn't change the problem. So, how many 6 do I have here? Very good. How do you solve a problem like Maria? Do you want to times by 6 and then divide by 13? How about we divide by 13 first? And we get this. Are you with me? For real? This is the part that I always lose everybody at. I divided both sides by 13. Got rid of this and made it a 1. Got rid of this and made it a negative 1. Now I times by 6. I get this. No. This says 13 times x divided by 6. PEMDAS is a lie. You can do anything in any order you want. More or less. Don't you dare get me in trouble. Okay? 13 times x. Divided by 6. How do I get rid of times 13? I divide by 13. Negative 1, right? How do I get rid of divides by 6? Well, I times by 6. That's it. Taylor, you're wasting his time. Negative 6 for x. How do we find out what y is? Plug it in. Plug it into either one. I'm going to plug it into this one. 3 divided by 2 times negative 6. What's negative 6 divided by 2? Times 3. Plus 9? Zero. 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 Negative 6 is what we got for x. Oh. Plug it in. No, valid question. So that's our midpoint. Ta-da. It was there the whole time. Now we need to use midpoint formula to find out where this point flips to, because remember, this is the same distance on both sides. <laughs> Making me mess up. Shut up. Yes, so I plug in A to the midpoint formula, and I plug in my midpoint. Midpoint goes there, A goes there. What we're finding is A prime. Are you with me? So I, mm, OK, so midpoint formula is average of the x is average of the y's. I know my midpoint. I found that. I know A is this guy. One of my endpoints. And my other endpoint is the one I'm looking for, so I left that like this. Better? Yeah. Now we know this part right here equals negative 6. So I times by 2 and then add 2, right? So times by 2, I get negative 12. Add 2, I get negative 10. Here, times 2, I get 0. Minus 6, I get negative 6. So negative 10 
Negative six. <gasps> Look, right there. It's on the line. A prime. How do you feel? Tell me how you feel. That's right. Next semester, I'm teaching an entire class just in interpreted tense. Like the entire math lesson will be. Bring a friend to dance? Let's do it. I'll participate. I taught a ballet class once. I didn't teach it. I, I, I assisted in it. I had a little girl that needed help to be part of the ballet program. I worked with kids over the summer, right? And so I did ballet with her. It was fun. Bring a boy to ballet. And everyone just bought their boy, brought their boyfriends, right? Yep. Nice. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Love that kid. All right. 83. Give the rule for the given translation. Want to do it or no? No. Translation. Super easy. Add or subtract, right? All right. Reflections. Basic reflections. How do we feel? How do we feel about 88? All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to do what the reflection should be based on this line, and then we're going to try and find the rule that matches it. That's what I would do. So A is 3 away from the line of reflection, which means when we reflect it, it should still be 3 away. So it ends up where D is. That's okay. D should be where A is, just because if I put the line of reflection in the middle, right? That's why. C prime ends up over here. B prime ends up there. If I write all my coordinates down, I get this. So A starts out at negative 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Be sure that when you count for the coordinates, you start from the origin here. 2 to the left, 5 up. Then A prime, start from the origin. 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right, and 5 up. Now we know, what kind of a flip is this? What kind of a reflection? We're flipping it in what direction? Horizontal, right? So the rule should be negate the x. But here's the problem. That doesn't get you the right thing, right? Because if you negate 2, you don't get 4. You get positive 2. So we need to add 2 on top of that to make it work. So if we were to flip it using the regular rule, it's flipping it over the x or the y-axis, right? So a would end up here. And you see how it's 2 off of where it's supposed to be, right? So we assume regular flip, and then we just slide it into place. That is a vector, technically. That's what I was thinking. We do it later. We're not moving this first. Okay. okay. Technically, you could. So the vector to move the line is negative 1, 0, right? Then we do our rule. And then we move it back, right? Correct? Correct. So think about what happens. I have x minus 1. And then I negate it. And then I add 1. Well, what happens if we distribute? Is that fun? Oh my god. A horizontal flip is always negative xy, but this one's not over the y axis, so we have to adjust. Don't look at this. When I take right, negative so two. Yes. So don't think about memorizing it that way because you have short term memory loss, remember? That's a joke. So this is a horizontal flip. Which variable does with the horizontal? X. So we negate the x. OK? That's a better way to think of it. Instead of it's the opposite. There's too many of those that are, it's the opposite. And then there's some that aren't. And then you're screwed, right? Moving on. Rotating about an uh, center point. How do we feel about this? Good, but go to arbitrary. OK. What's the rule for 180 degree rotation? Good. What's the rule for 9 degrees clockwise? Flip the y and the x, and which one do we negate? The first or the second? Yep. Clockwise. Again, 90 degrees this way. Good. And then you can plug it in. Yeah, it's easy when it's 0, 0, isn't it? No, because it's already on 0, 0. Yeah. I mean, you fill out your coordinates. But it's not hard if you just do the rule. Don't do the L's. God, that takes way too long. I did that so you could see what's I did that so you could see what's going on, so you could explain why the rule is what it is. Why in a, look at me! 
Yes. Y and X switch spots yes. because of the L. We negate the second one because of the L. We went from going to the right to going down. We're here. Yeah, that's what I positive, did. positive. Yes. We rotate cor uh, clockwise 90 degrees. Negative, negative positive. positive. We negated this guy, but now he's a y value, right? So we negate the second part. So it's, it stayed, you put the negative where the y used to be, so you don't keep the negative with the y? Right. So remember, x represents a number. So let's say it's 3. Yes. But now that 3 has switched over to the y spot, and it's negative. You see what I'm saying? So it's weird because we have x and y, and then we have like the x spot and the y spot, and they're not always the same. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it now. Wow, that's amazing. It's so cool when you guys are able to like hear the words and think math. Uh oh, Taylor's left us. Here's how I remember your names: Taylor is tall, and Shelby is short. Right? Makes sense. Makes sense. Tall Taylor and short Shelby. That's what happened. You want to do which one? 94. 94. 90 degrees clockwise about R. Well, we already know what a clockwise rotation rule is. It's Y negative X. We know that we need to slide R to the origin, so we're going to go one to the left and three down. So that's our vector. Can you see me? Yes? OK, yeah. awesome. And then we need to slide it back, right? Why is this hard? I don't know. <laughs> Blue, everybody's mind on Friday. Everybody's freaking mind. All right, so here we go. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take x and y, and we're going to subtract 1 and subtract 3. Are we good with that? Yes. Then we have to flip them, so I flip them. And then we add 1 and add 3, because that's what we said we'd do here, right? And there's the rule. That's it. Uh, I did have to negate one of them. You're right. You're right. You. I'm going to teach you this. See how R is here? I want it to be on the origin. So I go one to the left and three down. You with me? So, so that's what I do. One to the left and three down. That's what that means. Trust me. Okay. Then I do a rotation rule. They know this. You're going to pretend to know it. Clockwise, the rule is switch your two numbers here and negate the second one. Okay? We switched them. So if that was a 2 and a 3 before, we switch them and make it a 3 and a 2 and negate the second. Um, okay. Then we undo what we did before. See how this is minus 1, minus 3? Yeah. I'm adding 1 and adding 3. Okay. So I took my x and my y, and I subtracted 1 and subtracted 3. Okay. Then I flip them, okay. and I negate this one. Okay. Then I add 1 and I add 3. That's it. Then you take these numbers, these coordinates, and plug it in and to get to your new ones. Don't screw that up. You guys plug in those numbers and you're like, ah, math, ah. My advice is get good. <laughs> okay? So A is 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? So when I plug it in here, I plug in 1 for x. 1 minus 1 is? Zero. Good, thank you. What's negative 0? Add three. three. It goes here. Three. Six. Six for y. Six minus three is? Three. Add one. Four. And it goes on the left side. Taylor, I plugged in one for x. What's one minus one? Whatever. Then negate it. You guys are like, but then I need to negate, right? Like, it's all right there. That's why we wrote the rule out. We did everything. You just do what that says. Okay. Nothing more. We already planned it out, OK? <clears throat> Me gusta. 95. Explain the rule for a 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation, clockwise rotation, and 180 degree rotation about the origin. Are all these going to be over? All of them? No. One of them, yeah. Do you know how to explain these things? Oh God! I where did I, did I? I hope I didn't throw it away. Is it still here? My one that I wrote everything out. 
If not, I probably have the black and white copy somewhere. Oh no. Oh no. Please be here somewhere. I don't want to write this again. No. Um, yeah, but like most of it, like the first hour, you guys just screwed around, so. Right? Do you want the rules? I have the rules written down. Do you know how to explain them or no? No. Oh, hi. All right. Explain the rule for reflection. How'd you get in? Okay. Got it. Okay. And then hopefully kids are smart enough to figure it out and don't freeze. Local teacher gets fired after kid freezes outside. He was so dumb, the door was open the whole time. <laughs> Explain the rule for reflection over the x-axis. What kind of flip is that over the x-axis? Vertical flip, which means we negate the y. Rotation about an arbitrary point. Move it to the origin by a vector. Do your rotation, which we thoroughly explained over here. Right? And then move it back. That's it, Shelby. 98. Looks similar, doesn't it? 98? Wait, I want to do 107. You have to put your test away while I'm doing it, and you can't remember, or you can't memorize any of this stuff, okay? You're not allowed to. 104. We can do 104, but would anyone like to see 98? Rotation, arbitrary point. Yes or no? Slide it. Do your rule. Slide it back. Write your rule, and then apply it. You say it's easy. You say it is. Yet, I give you a test. That's 11 questions. And everybody's like, I'm going to draw L's. This doesn't look right. Probably not, because you got L City going on here, right? <laughs> right? I know. <laughs> That's the joke. All right, 99. 90 degree counterclockwise, same thing. Move to the origin, do a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. Flip your X, flip your Y, negate the first one. Then slide it back. You came in late, so you're like so untouched by this chaos. Like, you're so calm and relaxed. You can go ahead. Go grab it. Fourth bin, or uh, third bin, because you're, th no, second bin, because you're third hour. No, you're not. You're fourth hour. Third bin, because you're fourth hour. I have a plan period second. All right. Uh, hey, we're in triple digits, baby. Woo! We're on page 50. Girlfriend's age? Okay. 100. 55. I'm kicking you out of my class next semester, Sydney. Not allowed. All right. 100. That was a j it was, no, you haven't seen the you haven't seen the video. It's funny. Trip to 55, that's right. It's awful. It's awful. I'm ashamed of it. It is. I know, me too. But like that was the internet when I was younger. We had that. And my spoon's too big. That's right. Number I, I am so fortunate to have people that get my humor, because otherwise I would be in huge trouble. All right, number 100. You take your coordinate. Shut up, everyone. This is centered at the origin, so it's as simple as you do what they say. You take the coordinates and you do that to them. Are we ready to move on? Okay. So it's 0, 0, because centered at the origin, right? So it's as simple as you do what they say. Take your coordinates, do that to it, you get your new ones. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, wait, how do you know it's centered at the... Wait. Okay. I don't remember the word. I know, no one reads. Math, easy, reading, hard. Words are hard math to read. I love my job. I know, but you've cried laughing... And that's what I bring to the table. Sometimes I just 
<laughs> Your kids will be crying in math class, just like they already are, but for good reasons. 103, who would hire me, right? Like, I mean, come on. Hi, right, Mr. Mac, what's up, <laughs> right? And they're like, yeah, this guy should be in charge of children. All right, so here we are, centered at the origin. We have to find the rule. So we have to think, actually. So um, notice that B is two away horizontally, and it ends up one going the other direction. So what do we do to the x value? We went from here to here. We halved it. So we have the x, and we negated it because it goes the other direction, right? And then we went from, these are not L's, OK? I normally don't draw it. I just eyeball it with you, right? Because I don't want you to think L's. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we go to three, going the other direction. So we halved it and negated it. That's it. It's centered at the origin. We don't have to add or subtract. 105. Oh, yeah. See, I told you I fixed it on this. I told you I fixed it on this. Put your test away. I know. No, put it away. All the way in the bin. She's doing verse two. That's what I was thinking. All the way in the bin. And then I'll do this. All the way in the bin. I'm going to do all this, and then you're going to get it back out, okay? But you can't do it right now. I know, but you should understand the concepts. Okay, let's do it. Okay? That's fair. That's, more, that's way more than fair. I could be like, no, get out of here. I'm not doing this ever. But I'm going to do it. Okay? And you're not going to memorize this stuff because, one, it's never going to work because you have short-term memory loss. Okay? And two, uh, because memorizing it doesn't actually help you learn, and you're going to be screwed in the final, which is way more important than this. You have to remember the concept. Okay? Don't memorize the answer. It will not work. That's what Zayden's doing. Yep. You could be here and do stuff in the back. Oh, oh, you don't have your Chromebook. Okay. I can just have something done. Honestly, okay, hold on. Great. Right, we have oh, Everyone should just be here to review for math or otherwise, right? This is fun. All right. This is what people do in college. They have study groups. And it's just as dysfunctional as this. Except, like, probably one in your study group is on drugs. I'm thinking next semester, lock in with pool party. Lock in pool party next semester for the review. Can can you? I, I want you to not think about what I'm what I meant to ask. I just want you to do it. Can you say that thing you did again in the exact same way you said it? I got around. I got around. No, the same way. I, I don't know. How'd you do the head thing? Okay. I got to right? I just I I want to see that again. That emotion. Right? I'm like a director here. That was it. That was the shot. Yeah. That's some grandma level stuff right there, right? And then I had to put rash cream all over my body. Right? Like, okay, everyone shut up. This is centered at the origin. Right? Which means we have no adding or subtracting to do. We just have to figure out what happened. So we went from here to here. So notice, the distance across is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, vertical. Right? All the way. It's 6 all the way. There's two ways to think about it, right? You can go just the total length is 6, right? And we end up at 12. So what do we do? We, we did what? We went from 6 to 12. Doubled the what? Mm-hmm. We didn't flip, right? So no negative. Now, horizontally, they're two apart. And now they're 10. So what do we do? Yep. With no flip. Well, well, think about it. We go from 6 to 12. And we go from, five, or we go from 2 to 10. Now, you could also do it from the origin. We went from 5 to 10. Doubled it. We went from 1 to the origin to 5 to the origin, 5, right? However you want to think about it. When it's on the origin, it's super easy to just do it either way. Yeah. 
I know. I know. I've been thinking about this for weeks. Already. No. I teach geometry and algebra. And there's no geometry too. I'm here. Okay. I have taught it. I don't teach it here. Okay. But I don't. I can't teach everything. I wish I could. I wish I could be the Mr. Feeney where I follow you throughout your career. Right? None of my geometry teachers. Next semester. I teach seven classes, and six of them are geometry, which means all six of those classes I won't have you. It makes me very sad. Except for my algebra students. So some of them, might, actually all of them will be in geometry with me, yeah. right? Because I'm a only geometry teacher. If things stay the way they are, right? So, yeah. I would love to. I would love to be the Mr. Feeney and follow you throughout your high school, right? I'll miss you all terribly. I already know I will. I tell myself not to get attached. I give you guys numbers, right? Based on the seat you're in. Student number three, change seats. Now you're student number three, right? But uh, I always get attached. I get attached. It's really sad. And then you go, you graduate, right? And I probably never see you again. But I always remember you and think about you and tell stories of you to my other students. I go home at night and I think about how much I love you guys. I really do. I'm not making this up. I really do. I think, man, I love these kids. And most days I go home thinking, did some amazing stuff today. Yeah, yeah I do that. But I really do. I go home and I think, man, I love these kids. Every single one of them. Nope. Nope. I can't afford to have a dog. I can barely afford to feed myself. Leonard's at home with John Ralphio, his brother. Yeah. I can't afford to keep it. I have. We should do water spring. I can't. I can't. I don't have enough money to have a pet. What if we what if we brought in the I have a To have him here? I'll think about it. I will think about it. I have a lifetime supply of food. I will think about it. I don't think that I'm mature enough to handle a pet. Okay. <laughs> like I need to start with something more basic, like a pet rock. <laughs> like see if I can take care of it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Catches on fire. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Girl, please. I don't want to hear years from now that Michaela died in a pillow accident, okay? I'm joking, but I'm not 100%. Bye, Sydney. Please take care of yourself. The worst thing about being a teacher is getting attached to you kids and then finding out that one of you died in an accident or something. Please. Please don't, please. I'll be fine. Please be safe. I hate winter for this reason. Okay, I told you about my best friend in high school. Please be safe. Please be safe. I dread it more than anything. It can happen at any time. That's why we're here. Therapy. <laughs> Taylor, that's awful. I'm sorry. I love each and every one of you. I would never say it out loud, but I do. <laughs> Guys, it's super easy. This is a dilation about an arbitrary center. It's easier than a rotation because you never have to flip your x's and your y's. So I'm just going to add 1, and then I'm going to subtract 7. Then I double it, and then I add 1. And add, I'm sorry, add one and subtract seven, yes. I, I read that wrong, sorry. Minus one and add seven. That's what it says right there. That's what it says right here. 
There we go. I'm sorry. Minus. minus one, yes. I'm just not feeling pretty good. And then you plug it all in just, and you get your new stuff. Shelby has some problems. Perhaps later. Oh, I was like, Yeah. <laughs> Short Shelby. Short Shelby and Tall Taylor. Can we do one of seven minutes? Yes, we can. Transitive. All right, next one's the same dumb thing. Move C to the origin, so we're going to two to the left. And we're going to go one, two, three, four, five down. Do you remember everything I ever say? Oh, my God. This is impressive. I'm very impressed. I'm very flattered. Oh, wow. Why is it funny when you do it and Danny Mao does it? It's just annoying. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shout out to Nanny. I'm sorry, what? It's sliding it back, so we have to go two to the right. I'm sorry, this? That's what this is. All right, third it and have it. So... Oh my god. You know what I love about uploading this to YouTube? Do you know what I love about uploading this to YouTube? Is that when you guys are gone, I will go back and watch this. I do for my students at my other schools. And I remember, oh yeah. And then I cry. Who knew? Taylor is genuinely funny. All right. So it's Schlaffer and then uh, Parker and you. Con yeah. Consistently make me laugh. Wow. That's amazing. I know. I'm hilarious. Shelby. It's a B. That's the only question you should be asking. <laughs> he goes to the full explanation every time. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the page now. Okay. Finding the rule. Well, so first of all, we have to move this to the origin, right? So we're going two to the right and three down. Yep. So two minus three. And then to figure out what we multiply by, they're not telling us. We have to figure it out from this. So we're starting here. Look at VU. VU is one, two, three, four, five, six in length. And then it ends up being three in length. So we have the Y. And then now notice that TU is one, two, three, four, five, six in length. But it goes the opposite direction and is only three negate and have. I, I don't know. This is not hard. Didn't I tell you at the beginning? You can go back and look. I don't remember if I actually did. But, but like, guys, I told you, when we get through this packet, you're going to be like, actually, this is not that bad. Like, there's a couple proofs you might need to look over, but in general, you're okay. That's because you actually learned it the first time. That's why I'm here. Okay. Like I always do. Like I always do. Don't I go around and when you say, hey, I need you to look at this one, I say, yeah, that's not right. That's not cheating. That's not even me going out of my way to do stuff. It's just like, yeah, you made an arithmetic error. And then you find it, and then you fix it. Why is that so bad? It's not cheating. I'm sorry. Guys, I don't have heat in my car, and I can't afford heat in my house, so I don't want to hear it. An apartment. Well, 
Yep, that's right. <laughs> it's 100% true, but the way you said it just sounded really funny. But you can only take off so much. That's the rule. Hey, wow, it looks like Christmas. Wow. Oh, man. I <laughs> think that you should just play while I'm doing grades. Can we go on? Are you, you want me to need more time? Okay. Do you or do you not? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. I just Mitchell's not even in this class. He's just staying for the lulls. Staying for the lulls, right? Do it for the lulls. Well, it doesn't make sense to me why you do the vector and then undo it. Why do I do it? This is the time we ask. Excellent. So, check it out. The idea is that when C is on the origin, we just have to do this, right? That's all we have to do to it. Look at the last couple we did. Um, when C's on the origin, all we have to do is do this and we get the right stuff. That's that simple, right? So when C isn't on the origin, it becomes more difficult. And so what we do is we move it to the origin so that it makes it an easier problem. Now when we do this, Michaela, it naturally moves everything else with it. It's kind of like recentering the whole problem. And then it's an easy answer, right? We just have to do this. But that gives us the answers for when C is on the origin. So now we push it back, and it gets us where C is where it's supposed to be. So first we push it, which adjusts everything. Then we rotate it based on those new coordinates. And then we push it back so that everything's pushed back where it's supposed to be. If we hadn't done both of those, it wouldn't have worked out. So for instance, if I plug in T, T is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, right? So T prime. If I had just done negative a half and a half to it, right, what would I end up with? I'd end up with negative 2 and positive a half. Is that where T prime is? No. That's assuming if we were rotating about the origin. If we were rotating about the origin, that is where T prime would end up. It would end up at negative 2, a half. It would go from here to here, OK? But that's not where we're rotating. We're rotating about C. So what we have to do is we have to add 2 and minus 3. So when we do that, here's T. We're going to add 2 and minus 3. We get 6, negative 2. You with me? Yeah. Adding 2 and minusing 3. Then I negate it and have it. Correct? Mm -hmm. Then I subtract 2 and add 3. And that's where it is. If I hadn't done this step first, when I halved it and did the rotation, it would have ended up in the wrong spot because it would have assumed a rotation about the origin. But we weren't at the origin. But if we do that first, we are at the origin. So it works out, and then we push it back, and everything's in the right spot. OK? okay. Is that better? Yeah. I know it's not 100%, but is it better? Well, I feel like it's 100%, but then I don't get it. Mm -hmm. Again, we push it, we rotate it, we push it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't do that. 109. And then we're on 55. 55. So we're on 54 right now. Is first hour next semester? No. Because I think me and him did the great thing. This is not. He's a first hour. Don't love the great thing. We did comedical excellence. If that happens, I'm so mean at first hour. It's not comedical. I think that we should no, talk about the streets about that. No, streets is great. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a bunch of things to get this over there, right? How you do it is up to you. Here's how I would do it. Notice that V and U are in left and right, and they end up right and left. So at some point, I need to do a flip or a rotation. I'm going to do a flip because flips are way easier than rotations, right? And I'm going to flip it across the y-axis, meaning a horizontal flip. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to negate the x and keep the y. That's going to get my coordinates to be here. Oops, sorry, here. And they're two apart, right? Yep. 
So that's going to make u on this side, v on that side, t here, and w there. Well, check it out. Horizontal flip, same distance on both sides, right? Four there, four there. Six, 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 six. It's just flipped, right? Think about what it means. Don't plug in all the coordinates. You don't need to. Horizontal flip gets us here. Now, obviously, it's not the right size, but it is the right orientation. See how u and v are in the top and left and right? So now we're just going to make it bigger. I'm going to center it at 0, 0 just because that makes the math easier. It's going to push it really far away, but it's also going to make it the right size. So once I have it the right size, then last step will be to push it back into the right spot. Okay, remember, dilations don't just make it bigger. It pushes it away from the origin and makes it bigger. So... Can you flip that smaller one? Say it again. U is 4 away, and then U is 3 away. This is 4. This is 3. Oh, sorry. U is here, not here. That was a mistake. U is there. Is that better? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make it the right size. So we need this part, the horizontal part, to be doubled. So I'm going to double the x. So now I'm here, and I'm going to double the y. You with me? Right, it was negative from before, so I'm just doing it all at once, right? So then I do this, and after I've doubled it, it's going to double its coordinates. So instead of being 4, negative 2, u is going to be at... 8, negative 4. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, I doubled the x. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I doubled the x and got 8, right? I went from uh, 4 to 8, right? And then I'm going to double. I'm gonna do something with the y value. Well, we go from 1 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I'm timesing it by 5, aren't I? Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry. That's negative 2, and if I times it by 5, I get negative 10. So that's where u prime is. I'm not going to graph it. It would be like here, right? So u is the shape is down here now and the right size. So I just need to push it into place. Well, if u is here and I want it to end up here, which by the way is 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, what vector do I need to use to push it into place? Well, to get from 8 to 4, I need to do what? We're using a vector. We're pushing. We're subtracting, minus 4. Then I'm going from negative 10 to positive 6. What do I need to add? 16. And there's my rule. It flipped it to get the right orientation. It grew it to get it the right size, and then it pushed it into the right place. Flip, grow, push. You what? How long are the exam periods? I don't know. I don't know how long they are. It should. I'm sorry. You can't stay any later? No, I've got a ride and I've got things to do. I'm sorry. Bye. Are we ready? For the next one? Did we understand the last one? Yes, you may. I need that. Explain dilation by an arbitrary point. Super easy. How do we do it? Push to center. Zero, zero. By a vector. Then dilate. Then push back. Push to center by a vector. I'm looking for that, some form of that. Then I'm looking for something with dilate. Then I'm looking for something with push back by vector. The keywords that I'm looking for are the things I wrote down. I made it as short and sweet as possible to still get full credit. They said it couldn't be done. They said it couldn't be done. We're only 15 minutes late. But in, our, uh, in, in fairness, we started 45 minutes late. So.
It's not, and it's because you already know your crap. You just have to be reminded of it. It's two hours and 40 minutes no, yes, it is probably long. Thanks. My car is gonna be fine. I don't, it just pops off for a few seconds. I swear, I literally. Ask your question. Um, when can I come in in the morning and take my test tomorrow? Is everybody planning on coming in tomorrow morning to finish their test? The earliest I can be here is 7. I'd rather be here at 7 30, but do you want me here at 7? Yeah. Can I just can I do that? Yes. Like, what time? Seven thirty or seven? Seven or I've already I'll already be here. Okay, I'll try to get here as close to seven as possible. It's probably gonna be seven thirty. I'm exhausted, guys. Just sit outside my door. It's okay. I love you all. What? Yeah, you can finish your test now. I'll help you real quick and then I'll start theirs. I'm 15 minutes late for theirs. 7.30 tomorrow guaranteed, yes. I don't have pencils. Um, oh wait, here's a pencil. Someone left one behind. He already has one of those. Alright, I need to use the restroom, then I'm going to help Mitchell for a second, and then I'm going to get the review guide going. So let's stop this stream and we'll start a new one. Bye, I appreciate all of you.